Hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Mm. Today I want to talk about my gripper and do a review on it. It's been a year since I've made my latest gripper and I have some improvements I want to make to it and show you some things about it. Why this is really the best gripper I've made yet. But I thought we'd do a quick a trip down memory lane while we're at it. Before I ever started on this, and in fact, this is what started my channel three, almost three years ago now. My very first video was about the gripper. So, but to take, to know the history of the gripper, I'm going to take one more step further back. This used to be my favorite push pad, push stick, or whatever you want to call it. And what makes this one unique is I had a nice comfortable handle on it. It wasn't bi-directional. It was only one way. <clears throat> had a heel on it that I could turn the heel and put it out of the way and I had sandpaper on it. Very basic idea of what this is with a heel. And after a while you can see what happens to it. The sandpaper is virtually gone now. This thing doesn't, I can't use it this way at all. I can still use it as a heel with the heel on it. And that's when the other thing I liked about this design was the heel. Because I could turn it out of the way or I could drop it down and have it. And if one side got end got all chewed up, I could flip it over and have the other end instead down here. So it was kind of a handy little stop to have, and it made this thing a little uh, pretty versatile. But when I went to the gripper, I was influenced greatly by Microjig and their version of a gripper, a push pad. And so first thing I did is I made this bulky thing here. And at the time, I didn't realize just how bad it really was. I, but I wanted to go with the concept of no moving parts. The biggest drawback to the micro jig gripper, in my opinion, is all those moving parts. Every time you use it, you got to take the time to set it up. And I've heard people admit that that's the part that they don't like about that Microsoft jig, uh, that micro jig gripper, is that you have to set it up every time when you go to use it. This. I did not have to do that. I just put it up there. I set it up. If it looked like it was going to hit one of my legs, I would just flip it 180 degrees. And now the blade fell into one of the gaps. So it never deteriorated the gripper. Over time, I made a couple of silly mistakes. Accidentally too close to one side or the other. I should have had it flipped. And, you know, and I dropped it and broke the leg off of one side. This was the quarter inch thick side. So it wasn't very strong. Being MDF, it didn't take much to break that off. And so over a period of time, I had a pair of them. Again, this was a certain company was trying to sell you. Say, well, you don't need one. You got to have two so that you can do overhand. And I don't know about you. I never use overhand. But I made two of them because I thought maybe I would. And I've decided... Overhand with two of them. I never used that method But lo and behold Two of them arrived. So anyway, this was okay, except I had a minor problem with that one with that Particular model and that was that when the wood is laying flat when you're on there and you go to push it through It's easy and it's stable and it really gives you a lot of good control But if you take a piece that's narrower, especially when it's narrower than the center of gravity on the width of your gripper. This is my center of gravity from the handle pushing down. So when this wood gets thinner than half of this, then it starts teetering. And you don't, it's hard to keep that center of gravity where it needs to be. And that makes it harder to push through. So on narrower pieces, this doesn't work real good. And being so bulky, it made it really hard to use. So the first thing I thought of is, let's make it more stable. Well, the easiest way to do that, was I made a side plate. So I made this version. It has a insert, threaded insert here and a small dado right here on both sides. And then I take this piece here, cut a slot in it, and that drops down. So now, by taking, this is the height of my work piece, I can set that on there, lock this down, and now it's stable when I use it. So this was a good answer, and if I had to flip this, so first thing I do is I set this up, and if it wasn't right, I had to flip it this way. If this was on the wrong side, I then had to switch the sides. So this kind of went against the grain of what I was trying to achieve, and that was no moving parts. So 
uh, I wasn't ready to give up on that idea yet at this point in time. And so I went from this version. I decided that I didn't like it any more than I like these in all reality. So I ended up, I found two of these that I had. These are Brillo pads that I, on the grill to help clean it. And the Brillo pad was all used up on it. So I cleaned it up and I put a piece of MDF in the epoxy it on here. And this became my new gripper handle. Again, same thing. I cut notches down the middle or down this way strategically so it either would go, would not hit the blade if I had it this way or this way. It didn't matter depending on where the distance was as to which way you would turn it. Same thing as the original. It worked on the idea of the grooves being offset. So, and these I liked a lot. The one thing I learned that by being much smaller, more in control in my hand than this big bulky thing is. Uh, and you really feel much more confident. You do have more control with the smaller one. That I really, the, one of the problems with the original version is it's just too big and bulky. So this became my favorite one for a long time, is these two. But I was still on that mentality of trying that hand over hand thing. I finally came to the realization that I only used one or the other. I never really used both of them. But then the new issue cropped up. At this point, I had another viewer also in, interested in the gripper. We talked about it a lot, and he made one. And on his version, it looked a lot like this, big and bulky. And But his, he wanted to put a heel on it, like this has. So he made a spring-loaded heel to go on each end with a little piece of wood here that was spring-loaded to push it down. You set it this way, they would push up and hold up so that you had this surface holding down. If you rest off the end, then that would drop down and give you a heel. Great design, loved it. And uh, that one, I it was a good video. And it ended up he took it off of the off of YouTube. And so I I don't remember for sure all the exacts of it, but that's what I seem to remember how it worked. So anyway, that was a great idea too. The other improvement I had is, again, getting back to the stability of it. What I did was I drilled a hole down through here, one on each side. And I have an offset hole right here where it's threaded. So I can put this into the hole and I do the same thing I did with the other. I set it here. I set that to where I want it. I set the set screw. And now that gives me the stability that I'm looking for to hold that nice and level for me as I'm pushing down and pushing through. This helps hold me level so I didn't get that teetering on narrow pieces. Um, but I found I never really used it. I still was able to hold them and I just put up with that tilting. Being the fact that it was more, uh, a little lot smaller and downscaled, it made it a lot easier to control those little pieces than I could with this big bulky thing. I could feel them more and I could stay more stable on top of them even when it wasn't over the center of gravity. And so this wasn't too bad at all. I really like the size. And which surprises me that the size of this, even though it's the same width as the other one, it's a lot shorter and it's a lot thinner this way and smaller in the handle and the beefiness. And it doesn't need to be all beefy. This is actually much better. And I've always got this piece here between me and that saw blade. No matter what happens, if something goes wrong, it's got to go all the way through this before it gets to this. So that makes this a really good one. The other thing that's important about this design is that because it's bi-directional, it also feels the same to you all the time. So no matter where it is that you're cutting, this feels the same no matter which way it's turned. And that's important. That's why this handle works better on this design than this type of handle here. That's a, a unidirectional only one direction and this handle you can flip it so it depends on how you design your gripper as to what kind of handle you're going to want on there it doesn't have to be comfortable when you're using it unless you're going to be using it for eight hours straight and I don't I don't use these that long period of time. I don't use it for any long stretch of time so it, that doesn't matter what's important is consistency consistency and how it feels when you use it you always feel the same when you're over. If I use this one, then I come back and use this one, they feel totally different. And I have to get used to using both of them. And they would feel different when I went to use them. 
and I would never feel comfortable trying to use this as a hand on, a hand over hand thing because they're different, and that would make a, a an issue there. So being the same this way, that's what makes this handle the way it needs. Why the handle is designed the way it is. I'm rambling, but this is a rambling mess. Anyway, so much about that. And so now I've evolved through that stop. The other thing about the stop is about the same time, I had somebody tell me, the guy's name was Buck, so I called this the Buck Stop. But he came up with the idea of in, uh, to put a stop right directly on it by notching your work and having a step here. So that now, when you're going through here, and when you get near the blade and you want to go through, but you want to get behind here and get a grip, this one you can drop back and hook at an angle. Now I have, now I have a good surface here, and I have a hook on it. It shortens the amount of flat surface you have contacting the board, but you still have a nice sizable amount because you don't have much to go through the blade anymore, and you should be able to take this the rest of the way through the blade. This was good. The only drawback to the buck stop was it does reduce the amount of surface that you are using to contact your work when you move it. So the buck stop, I just wasn't thrilled with it. I decided I, I like it better not having a stop at all at this point, or I might use that other viewer, Tom's version. And if I did, I, I still might, but again, it goes against the grain of, of a no moving parts gripper. So I moved up and the gripping of this wasn't always the greatest either, I felt. Uh, hardwoods didn't grip as good as the softer woods did when you're using this. So I got to thinking about maybe a better contact point. So instead of this, I got this hairbrain idea of brad nails. Yes, I know. Sometimes we do think of silly things too. But I was determined to try it. So I took and put brad nails down through here in rows strategically in the same theme as the legs of this style. So instead of having these legs through here, I had brad nails sticking out in the middle of what these rows would be. On here, I marked it out and then I used it a couple of times. And I will tell you, that was probably one of my more scary experiences trying to use one of these things. I didn't like it at all. I quit using that as that immediately. The, the brad nails didn't really bite in like I thought they would to really hold it. They really were easy to skim across. Uh, but also, you only had to miss the, the right way to turn it. You went the wrong way and went through there. You'd wipe out a whole row of brads instantly. And look out, you better be wearing a splatter shield in front of your face. If you did something that silly. So I decided it was a horrible, horrible idea. But I looked at this at the same time in time period that I this evolved a year ago. I was in the middle of playing with silicone caulking. Now what I was doing with it then was I was taking it out and spreading it on flat surfaces. And then I tried to spread it out as thin as I could on that surface to make that surface slick, uh, non-slick. And still have a smooth finish on it. And actually, it works real well for that. This stuff does. But then I got to thinking, why not can't I use that on the bottom of my gripper to get better gripping power? So what I ended up doing is instead of a thin coat, though, I went with a quarter inch thick of that stuff. All over the whole thing. So since the brad nails were no good anymore, but they weren't going to be in the way if I went with the same thing. So I took this brad nail one and I put it the silicone on it and that's how I've been using it and as long as I stay in the no cut in the cut zone and stay out of the red with my blade so I always put it down and I check before I use it instinctively since I use it all the time I don't even think about doing it so when I pick it up within two seconds of wherever my fence is already set I can check this on the other side of the blade setting it up against the fence and turn it to where I know the black is going to hit the blade and I'm ready to go. Then I just make note whether it's with the X or without the X. So when I pick it up, I make sure I'm going the right way. That makes this work real well. And it limits the amount of tear out. In a year's time, this is what it looks like. It's still the gripping power. Well, let me show you. This is a, my grip with sandpaper. I have to move my coffee. Give me a second here. Let me move it. 
Sorry, I had to do that. So anyway, if I use this one on my table here and try to move it, you can see it really slides. It table barely moves. I take this same one, and I don't have to push down near as hard. This thing is gripping very well. This thing grips a lot better than sandpaper does. That was the first thing I noticed when I went to the silicone. That Wow, I like that. Also, if I didn't have to put pre-made grooves in it. I just let it form as I went along. I just followed the rule of which way to turn it by looking at it once I set the fence so I know which way I would go through to stay in the black areas. That keeps this eventually this will degrade to this point but that's the worst it'll ever be so the worst it'll ever be is like this that's not bad but also i got to thinking about it after a year of using this i'm looking at this and i'm thinking why can't i go back and take my caulking gun and clean this up real good and i talked about how to clean this before you just take a <clears throat> let me touch on that even though it's a rambling you can take a steel brush and you go through here and brush it in any direction, in all directions, however you want. And get it. You can clean it. And then it becomes really good again. You don't wash it. I just clean it with a wire brush real quick. Real easy. It doesn't take much. And that keeps it clean and gripping. So the stuff is pretty easy to maintain. I suspect a lot easier than the uh, Microsoft Jig uh, version. So, and the other thing is, is that it's repairable, I think. I'm going to take the 100% silicone caulking, same stuff I've got on here already. This is a different brand, but it, it shouldn't be a problem. And I'm just going to fill this over, set it back on a, on a pad again, smash it down, let it sit for a couple of days, and put it back in use, and it'll be all filled in and be brand new again. So, <coughs> excuse me. That means that I don't you ever have to remake this. I just have to take a, a day or two, fill it in, and start over. So it's a forever pad, too, which I really like the idea of that. But that got me thinking about one more thing, and that is all the way back to this one. Believe it or not, I'm going full circle here. And let me tell you why. So now, this had sandpaper here. This has the back heel on it, and it's unidirectional. But it has the heel. My gripper pad is different because you no moving parts and you have to turn it. But there's no reason why I can't take the idea of this silicone, quarter inch silicone pad. <clears throat> and I'm going to put that on this stick here instead. Then I can use this only in one direction always like this. And it should grip real well even on thin pieces is my thought. So if I have small pieces that I'm doing, I should be able to do it with this. And I'll probably make a, a little brother of this one, more in proportion to this, for another push stick that isn't so wide, basically. And move the handle over so that it's, uh, so that its center of gravity is all the way near the edge. That's where this kind of push stick would probably make a better handle, because the more narrow you go, you don't want to have to turn it. But I shouldn't have to. With that caulking on here, I just let it chew up. And whenever it gets to a point where it seems like it's not really gripping well, I'll just resurface it and keep going. So I think that I'm actually going to move back to what used to be my favorite one. I'm going to make one like this. I'm going to make it little brother. They're both going to have the nice little pad of silicone on there. And we're going to use those for a while, and I'll let you know how they work. Because I like this. It has not only the good gripper style, but it also has the heel on it that I really like that's easy to use. Now, I can't call it the no moving parts gripper, but I think it'll be actually a better gripper than even this one is when I get done. So, full, rev full evolution. I started here, worked my way through, and I ended up there. Go figure. Anyway, I wanted to show you the history there, show you where I was at with it. So I'm also going to resurface this and see how that works and make sure that everything will work. And if that works the way I think it will, then I'm going to make a couple of those. And we'll see if maybe we don't go from this all the way back to that again. Uh, how strange OTB thinking sometimes does, huh?
Anyway, this is Russ. I thank you for coming on this little voyage with me and remembering the history of the Gripper. That's what started my channel. Uh, I want to thank all you guys that have been here through that whole thing and those of you that have just joined me. If you haven't seen all my Gripper videos, there is a playlist on that in the playlist on my channel. Just go look it up and you can go through those. Uh, just a quick note. I did one on what I call the Flipper Gripper. I did one version of that, and then I just kind of gave up on that idea. It, I didn't like it, quite honestly. Now I am working on another version of a Flipper Gripper, and I just haven't really got it to where I want it. So maybe that one will apply, but if you don't want to look at that one, you don't have to. You can save a little time there. But it may the idea about you watching these videos, if you would, is it should trigger things in your head to say, oh, that, I can take that idea and put this little twist on it to be even better. Then when you relate that back to me, we can have an even better one than probably I can make by myself. So don't be afraid to look at them and think about them. If you have any inclination of making something along this line, go through that whole set and you'll see what I'm talking about. And I think it'll help you see the big picture of how I went from here to here and I'm going back. And you may find some other way that we can go off to a tangent too. So... I'm done rambling. Sorry I took so long. I tried to make this shorter. This is my fourth time I've done this, so, uh, and I can't seem to get it under 20 minutes. Anyway, I do want to thank you for being here. If you have any ideas, suggestions, or experience about this sort of thing, would love to hear about it. Just leave it in the comments. Uh, if you like this video, you learned something here, hit that like button. YouTube and I both appreciate it. Most importantly, though, please. As the sign, as the sign says, you come back because we're nowhere near done. Thanks. Hey, and we'll see you again very soon. Bye.